Wherapy. Therapy wherever, whenever. So, welcome to the third and final part of this week's podcast about OCD. So, in the first part, we talked about what OCD is. Then we talked about how OCD develops, and we've linked this to anxiety. And in the third part, we're going to talk about how we can treat OCD. But before I do that, I'm going to introduce the third and final country in this week's therapy world tour. And that country is Oman. So if you're from Oman and you want one free therapy session, make sure you're the first one to contact me and do so by going over to at therapy underscore ENG on Instagram and send me a direct message. Um, And if you want to know the three countries that I'm offering uh, ahead of time, one day ahead of time, because I post the three countries uh, every Monday on Instagram. There's three new countries every week. And if you want to know that one day ahead of time, then make sure to subscribe to my newsletter, um, which is available at werapi.com. Um, then you're going to get them uh, on Sunday. So you're going to know about them on Sunday. So if you're from those countries, then you'll have one uh, extra day to make sure that you're the first one to contact me. Yeah. So how do we treat OCD? And the first step, first and maybe most important step is... Um, is how we kind of relate to people with OCD or um, if we have OCD uh, in some sort of way Um, as the kind of letters uh, say uh, OCD is an obsession yeah so it might it might be that we come into a room and we need to make sure that we touch every object in the room yeah um, before we sit down because otherwise we'll get an anxiety which I talked about in uh, in the last section yeah that we think is going to develop so quickly and so intensely that something is going to happen with our person that we're going to have a heart attack or just not exist yeah so it's it, the threat um or the negative consequences of not doing that action, which is obsessive, is so real to this person. Yeah. So we need to, if we have a person with OCD in in our lives, then we need to make sure that we kind of have the kid gloves on a little bit. And if we are somebody who is who has some sort of OCD, yeah, and if you're if you have it and you're watching this video then if you're so if you're kind of at that level of awareness of it then um then your ocd would probably um without knowing you not be so strong at such a, a strong level that it's affecting kind of your um your ability to live your life yeah um but so we need a the first step is not to make it worse yeah and that might sound funny but sometimes we want to get a change so fast yeah we want to feel good feel normal yeah the urge to feel normal and to have um good mental health is so strong that we push ourselves and it gives the absolute opposite effect yeah and i've seen this with some patients yeah that um they are in the shower for maybe two hours yeah and then uh, and then the parents or or they start to kind of work on themselves yeah um and then it just the pressure just gets too much and they end up in the shower for three or four hours yeah and still not feeling feeling clean yeah so we just want to kind of 
get the obsession to level off yeah that what they're doing at the current moment is enough yeah um uh, if you're wondering why i'm so uh silent just now it's because i'm writing on my whiteboard yeah get the obsession to level off And we do so by by just kind of when and now I'm talking um, kind of with the thought of somebody helping this person with OCD. Yeah, um, that person helping would kind of have to normalize what the person is doing and know the person's routine and then say, well it's good here this is this is enough yeah. if you're wondering what that sound is in the background it's my dog who's come into the studio who's sat himself down yeah or i don't, I don't know what he's doing um but yeah he's scratching on the floor <laughs> i can hear that now so we need to kind of understand that person with OCD, their routine, and then we need to stop them when uh, when they feel the urge to go one step further than they usually do. Yeah. And then the second part is to uh, is obviously to work on the OCD. Yeah. And this is kind of after a longer period of normalizing the OCD and you can we work on OCD um, by looking at the obsession yeah um, uh, let me just write this down uh, one minute um, I can't spell now whatever um so we do certain exercises so if the ocd is connected to for example washing your hands then it sounds very simple but we have a timer next to the sink and we wash our hands for 30 seconds and then we stop the timer yeah or the timer goes off yeah. And then we reset the timer to five minutes. And in those five minutes, we are not going to wash our hands. Yeah. And then for every time we do this, we make the time in between washing hands longer. Yeah. So the next time it will be 30 seconds and then it would be maybe 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, and we do this, we keep on doing this. Yeah. And um, OCD can kind of get worse if there's something in your life that is stressing you out as well. Yeah. So even if we're fully treated for our, for our OCD and we feel like we can we can live our lives properly, yeah. When that stress comes back in our lives, the OCD uh, might come back as well. Yeah? So um, these exercises are very handy and very good to have with us throughout our lives yeah if we have this vulnerability yeah to to having these compulsive acts yeah um so the exercises yeah and then the third thing which i think can help yeah um and this is something that i think um somebody somebody connected to the person with OCD would have to help with yeah it's not so much the person themselves yeah but it's understanding what's going on in the body yeah cuz when we have OCD we're looking at what's outside of us and so we're touching all the things in the room to make ourselves feel uh, okay with the situation yeah to stop our anxiety yeah or we're uh, 
uh, entering the room in a certain way or we're touching uh, the handle of the door to make sure that it's locked or we're washing our hands in a certain way so we're looking at the act yeah we're focusing outside of our body and we're not focusing so much inside of our body yeah we're not looking at that anxiety yeah so keeping kind of a an eye on that anxiety is very very important yeah and this is where, where if you're a friend or a family member of somebody with OCD you can help um, them with yeah this is an area that you can help them with um, and that's simply by just being their anxiety coach um, and here you can say well um, you whatever your name is yeah uh, whatever your friend's name is I can see that you have anxiety now um, I can see it because you are fidgeting with things and I can see it in your eyes and uh, you're smiling in that nervous way um, and I can uh, suspect that you might have sweaty palms and your heart might be beating that little bit faster and you might be breathing that little bit faster as well this is anxiety why do you think anxiety is here right now yeah and then your friend would have to answer yeah um, oh well it's because of this small room or it's because of um, uh, if I don't if I don't actually go into this room in this way then then this will happen okay well if that happens then how will that affect you yeah. and you just keep them focused on the anxiety so you have this role play with the person who has the anxiety yeah. and you connected to that bodily sensation of anxiety yeah? you describe their anxiety what you see yeah and you help them to describe what they see and then you link it to what happens in the room yeah so you keep that focus on the anxiety and the anxiety will eventually go away yeah so if you're watching this on youtube you will see it uh, listed on the whiteboard uh, the three things to do is to get the ocd B to level off, yeah. It sounds uh, easier said than done, yeah. And then the exercises that I mentioned uh, with the timer, and then being the anxiety coach, yeah. So give these three uh, things a try, um, and I'm sure you will see some positive effects. Thank you very much. Uh, for listening to the podcast today uh, i hope you enjoyed it uh, if you like it please follow on uh, spotify or wherever you get your podcasts i put up a new podcast every other week about mental health and if you are interested in following me on um, instagram it's uh, werapi underscore eng and then also uh, on Facebook, it's Werapi. And Twitter, I don't use that much, but I also have an account there. So just search for Werapi if you're interested. And of course, YouTube. Otherwise, I offer therapy sessions for 70 US dollars um, a session, online sessions, available at werapi.com. And I also have a bunch of online courses there available with a subscription to Werapi Plus. So if you're interested, just go over there and check it all out. Otherwise, have a great day and take care of yourself.